to Canterbury! Hi, my name's Jeremy. Um, I thought I might tell you a bit of a story about uh, growing up um, homosexual in the uh, punch bowl area. Well, I went to school at Canterbury Boys High School, and if you'd asked me when I was little what kind of experience I would have at Canterbury Boys High School, I would have thought that it would have been one of um, a lot of bullying or um, one where I'd have to repress my sexuality a lot. I'm Marcus Goodacre, I'm 44, I live in, in Riverwood. I first came out when I was about 14. My name is Chris and um, I'm from the Canterbury area and I'm 27 years old and I grew up here pretty much. I live here with my family. James Rosa. The first person I came out to was my brother. Um, I needed to come out to someone in my family. <clears throat> um, I was hiding it for most of my life and I thought the person I trusted most was my brother. Okay, my name is Peter Politis. I grew up in Belmore and before that I grew up in Greece. And before that, I grew up in Brighton Stands, um, but I've spent the majority of my life living in the Canterbury Bankstown district area. I have a really strong connection to the community in Canterbury. Um, people I went to primary school, people I went to high school with. My mother also worked at Canterbury City Library, and I consider myself uh, a community member of this area. Hi, uh, my name's John and I live in Earlwood and um, I'm 66, I think that's a nice number, 66, and um, as you might guess, I'm gay and I'm of course a member of Come Out Australia, that's why I'm sitting here with my uh, head pressed against the wall talking to this camera. Uh, my name is uh, Sandy Bottom and I have lived in Canterbury Bankstown area for over 15 years. I bought a house uh, in Canterbury oh, well, as I said, over 15 years ago, which used to be an ex-dental surgery and uh, which was, previous to that, was a doctor's surgery. Um, and the, but the actual house was built in uh, 1921. So it's an old uh, Californian bungalow style house. Because I was aware from a very young age that, um, that I was gay and uh, I anticipated that this would cause problems in a school where there was a lot of uh, a high ethnocultural mix um, and in nearby schools there was um, quite a few issues but I was lucky in some ways that we had some very supportive teachers um, and I think it's important in this, in this time where we're confronting the issue of uh, teenage suicides, uh, gay and lesbian suicides, um, due to bullying in schools, um, to know the huge difference that um, school administration can make uh, to the experience of a child who is gay uh, or questioning their sexuality uh, as they're going through school. I first came out to my mother when I was 21 years old. That was a, a result of um, having a real conflict at time at home, um, being one person at home and being another person outside of home, which is, I didn't know then, but a very typical experience for people that are GLBTIQ. Um, and then I came out to my father a few years ago. That was much more difficult. He didn't speak to me for two years, and we were living in the same house because I'd moved back then. But luckily enough, I'm just as stubborn as he is, so it worked, and now he's speaking to me. Even though I never really came out, because I always was who I was, at first I thought I'd come out to my friends, but they all knew already, so it's just like, hallelujah, it's about time you came to the realisation, or admitted it. And then to my parents, when I was 18, my mother has two gay cousins who live in Amsterdam, I reassured my mother that had nothing to worry about. I was 18 and I had met this nice guy and my mother was like, who is this guy who keeps ringing you up? Blurted out, he's my boyfriend, what's the problem with you? She just stormed out the room, slammed the hallway door, her bedroom door, and then rang up her cousin in Amsterdam and 
gave him a big what for. It's like, how dare you get it wrong? Well, to me, it wasn't a big issue, really, because I wanted to work behind a camera. Uh, and um, in that field, it didn't really matter much, you know, whether you were gay or not. And when I was young, your big heroes were people like David Bowie. Oh, that was more when I was in the 20s. But anyway, um, you know, the, the kind of the gay thing wasn't amongst my uh, peers. It was not all my comrades. It wasn't really a big thing. And it was kind of cool to be anyway. I uh, came out when I was 17 years old, and uh, that wasn't my choice. Um, I come from a uh, Maltese background, and uh, my mother had very little knowledge of what it meant to be homosexual. And uh, when I was 17, I was currently working at McDonald's in Oxford Street, um, and also going to a private boys' school. Um, and uh, one night after work, um, I came home at one o'clock in the morning and uh, my mother found pornography and uh, being VHS at the time, she uh, strewn the, uh, the tape of the, of the video across a packed bag and a uh, poorly written letter saying she didn't want any queers in my house. And so at the age of 17 at one o'clock in the morning I had a bag packed and I had to leave home. And uh, it, it's quite a tough and confronting uh, thing to be at that age. Um, and having your sexuality thrust upon you. I first came out to my sister. Well, she kind of already knew about me, but um, she didn't say anything. Um, she wanted me to come out to her before she acknowledged it. So I did. And the way I did it was um, I took her out. I said, I'm taking you out tonight. Um, so I took her to the midnight shift in the city. I didn't even tell her it was a gay club or nothing. I knew you were going to take me to a place like this. And after that, we just talked about it, and she asked me like if I had anyone and stuff like that. With my parents, um, I haven't actually told them, but I think they know. Um, when I was a lot younger, they used to always talk about like marriage and stuff like that, but as I got older, they sort of died out. They kind of get it. They sort of just let me do my own thing, mind, mind their own business. They don't really ask me where I'm going. They don't really pay that much attention to me anyway. They're pretty laid back. Like, you know what? I'm comfortable with who I am because it's all I've known. The first person I came out to was my brother. Um, I needed to come out to someone in my family. <clears throat> um, I was hiding from most of my life. And I thought the person I trusted most was my brother. So uh, we were driving in the car. Um, and I just remember I felt like I was going to faint just from actually saying, guess what, I'm, I'm, I'm gay. So we went for a little drive. I took him to Bunnings Warehouse as a ploy to get him to sort of sit with me and go through that. Um, I, didn't, I, couldn't, I didn't have the guts to say anything. And on the way back, <laughs> two minutes from the house, I decided just to say, um, I need to tell you something, I'm gay. And when I said those words, it didn't feel like I was li liberated, it didn't feel good at all. It just felt like I felt completely exposed. But I, I did it, um, I don't regret it. It's pretty much, he said, you know, hey, it's okay, you know, I, I love you, you're still my brother. There was no negativity towards it. Um, and I didn't think there would be, because him and, him and I are really close. I, I don't think there would have been any negativity towards me. Um, he was just worried, like, how would I get children? How, you know, how will I have children? Will I have a loving partner? You know, and then he, the, the overprotection of, you know, if anyone gives you a hard time, you know, I'll, you know, you just tell me kind of thing. Even though I was older than him, which is good and it's nice. I just, I told him that, you know, I'm going to have children one day. You know, and there's nothing to worry about. I can, you know, defend myself. Kind of. Thing. It wasn't any big issue coming out, really. Um, my parents are very liberal. I mean, I never told them that I was gay, but. Um, they knew, you know, I mean, I worked in movies and all that kind of stuff. They, they knew, you know, which is good. Uh, my brother got married, had children, so that little bit was done. Terrible marriage. My mother said, never get married. She had a reasonable marriage. 
I think the majority of this area is homophobic, and by that I mean I wouldn't be, I'd do it, but I wouldn't feel safe holding my partner's hand down the street, even though I would do it. You know, and uh, I think that's the measure of homophobia, is whether or not you can show affection in public, even though I think showing affection in public is actually quite gross. It's very different. I've seen same-sex couples hold hands in Paramount. Um, I wouldn't... I, I think... I think... I think there are different levels of homophobia happening in each area. Like in Blacktown, I think it'd be problematic to look gay and walk down the street, you know, let alone be with a partner and walk down the street. Mm -hmm. I think it depends. And the thing about Canterbury Bankstown district area is that there are pockets of poverty within the area, and usually that those pockets of poverty are associated with uh, less informed values and views. I was lucky that some senior staff at school were very supportive of me, including the principal. And I think the principal uh, makes a huge difference to the way that the entire school administers the issue of homophobia, where, s where principals are uh, homophobic themselves, uh, they tend to look the other way, and uh, people can uh, get away with a lot of uh, very cruel behaviour that uh, they wouldn't otherwise. I have now worked a part of Canterbury Boys High School and have worked in Canterbury Girls High School as well. I remember even being a kid, you know, I knew I was different ever, ever since I can remember. I never was like anyone else, even in school. Um, I was always doing things that were different to everyone else. I liked things that were different. I, you know, listened to music that no one else really listened to or admitted to listening to, um, whereas I did. But I and I'd get laughed at for it, but I'd never understood why. Because why is it so funny to like the Spice Girls, or why is it so funny to like, you know, Madonna even? But you know, I guess you know, I understand it now, but not so much then. Um, thankfully at the time, um, even though the first few weeks were quite tough, um, I was really grateful that eventually I found uh, gay resources um, that helped me. Uh, there's a, there was a community uh, group called 2010 that uh, was a, a, a gay youth refuge and uh, it's, 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 it's such a beautiful thing that, that there is these, uh, these um, volunteer groups in the community because um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a real life uh, thing to be uh, kicked out of home at, at a young age. Um, thankfully, uh, um, I've obviously got it, amended the relationship with my mother, and and it comes down to ed education. You know, knowledge is power, and and you know, there's so many people who who fear homosexuals because of their lack of understanding, and uh, with a little understanding, they realise that we're still people just like anyone else, but we just happen have a different sexual orientation. I was involved in the Labour Party, which at the time was probably the biggest GLBTIQ group I could think of. I was in, yeah, at university and at here, and I was a branch member here of the local area. Um, I guess the groups that I have accessed, I, the, when I was growing up, Come Out wasn't around. Um, I never really accessed, or it might have been, I just never accessed those groups. I think when you're young, the only groups you access are nightclubs. Well, when I was young, in my 20s, I didn't belong to groups much. I used to mainly go to bars, never found them friendly though. I started going to groups, really just to meet people, and it's been successful. My first group, I think, was um, Helix. It was in Cremorne, on the other side of the harbour, of course. Like a lot of groups, you know, you have these committees and all these people. about wanting power and all this stuff and that group dissolved but it used to have a lot of people. We used to meet at a place called the Pickled Possum in um, Cremorne. It used to be wonderful. And by 1991 October we decided to, to form yeah, a social group where the emphasis was on meeting and making friends. The group was called SWAGS, Southwest Area Gays, a phrase that was used at the time a swag of friends um, and yeah that's when I started to go out to the clubs uh, with him and we started to look into other groups and, and stuff like that started going to just random social outings and I got more
exposed to it, and the more ex exposed I got to it, I think the uh, gay community, the more I understood it, and the more I noticed there was like a lot of glitches and, and things in there that weren't quite what I was looking for. Um, and this was probably in my early twenties, even like when I was nineteen. Um, that's when it all started. And even now I'm 27, almost 28, and I still can't find the, the right group or the, the kind of social environment that I fit into. So it makes me realize that being gay isn't the problem. It's not, it's not something that's an issue to me, it never was. I never struggled with it at all. It's just always, it's just what I've always known. So, um, what I struggle with is finding my place within the gay community. Well, my job as an entertainer, which I've been doing over 25 years, is not to um, announce to the world that uh, a man in a frock is to be gay. Our job is to entertain and for people to be aware that we have this community. Most of our work, myself and all the other girls that work for me, work in straight venues with heterosexual couples. We barely work our very minimal time in gay and lesbian venues. And the one thing that we want to broadcast to these people that come to see us, that see these shows, to see, you know, I travel right around the country um, and internationally, is that if you have a son and daughter, and you have that slight amount of doubt, then it's okay to ask them and sort it out early. So then it avoids things such as suicide, um, mental stress, um, physical harm. These things that, that our new generation are facing. Gay and lesbian is not about a choice, it's about understanding. Um, I met the first uh, person uh, I would consider uh, my gay friend uh, in year nine. Uh, we came together uh, because we were both slightly odd and uh, I didn't so much mind being odd. Everyone kind of knew that I was different. But uh, he was, he had come from another school very nearby where he was bullied a lot uh, for who he was. And uh, he didn't really know that he was uh, gay at the time. All he knew was that he was different and uh, that that was enough for people to uh, really pick on him. Uh, and it had gotten to the stage where he was uh, subjected to um, violence at his old school, so that he at literally had to move uh, to our school. Uh, and when we first met, he was a very shy and awkward uh, student, but we became friends. And uh, it was, I think, the fact that we could both uh, be ourselves to some extent in the friendship that, uh, that uh, bound us together. Uh, we met another friend uh, that same year, and we formed a little circle of friends all uh, in, in Year 9 at the time um, who supported one another and, and were just friends. I mean, doing things that high school students do without ever talking about things like support networks or uh, anything like that. We, that's what we were to each other. And we were non-judgmental, obviously. Uh, eventually, our little friendship circle grew. I mean, when we were in uh, junior years, uh, we didn't have uh, much access to space, but we uh, we basically uh, found uh, areas in the school where we could just go and hang out and uh, as we grew as we grew older uh, those areas um, became uh, uh, almost like a little havens for us um, uh, my best friend came out uh, in year nine and uh, a year later than that uh, the other person that um, we'd met also came out uh, making uh, the three of us in, in total who were the centre of the group. I was quite naive about the gay community. You know, I thought it wasn't what it is. I think um, there's a lot of things that go on in the gay community that I don't like. I'm not really a fan of clubbing <clears throat> and the drug scene and the, the sex scene and the beat scene. All the sex on premises and all those kind of things. I think I'm maybe a bit, bit old-fashioned with that. Um, and also.
Also, I think that um, growing up having to hide everything has kind of, kind of attacked my brain a little bit, and I think I need to sort of always see a positive spin on things because all I see is negativity. I think it stems from having a really hard teenage, teenage years. He came up to me once and said, Are you can. I didn't know what on earth that meant. Anyway, <laughs> found out what that meant soon enough. Um, that was at a place called Capriccio's. That was a great, great show. Great shows they used to have at Capriccio's. Big gowns. Oops. Um, you know, big. I mean, the, the clothes they had. Money spent on them. They used to have um, big audiences. And they were yeah, clever shows. Some of them very uh, well done. Capriccio's. There used to be another place called DC, not DCM. It was Patches. Called. Patches, yeah. Patches, yeah. Yeah, great shows there too. Oh, I used to go out a lot in those days. I used to love dancing. Don't see anything like that anymore. When I turned 18, because I was so sheltered, I was really lost. I didn't know what to do with myself. It was sort of like, now I'm what? I don't have school. There's no routine. What do I do? So I was watching a show called Beauty and the Beast. And um, one of the panelists um, mentioned this website called Mogenic, I think it was called. And, um, so I went on the, and on the main page there was this um, ad about this social group that they had called Way Out. I went to the f like next group that they had at Parramatta. I remember being really nervous because it was the first time I'd ever done anything gay um, besides listen to Madonna. And, um, and then I went there and I met a lot of nice people. It was like, it was kind of a relief. I felt like, oh wow, there is people that like the kind of music I like. And there are people that are weird and different, you know. Suddenly I wasn't so weird, I was kind of, you know, fitting into some sort of a, a culture, you know. And um, I met a really good friend of mine. Um, that's when everything started to go up, and that's when everything started to make sense. It was sort of like I um, was exploring alongside, you know, I met others through that group as well, who I became friends with for a while, but this one person is someone who's, who I learned a lot with and from. Um, um, in this area, of course, there used to be a lot of beats. It used to be a lovely way to meet people, outdoors activities. Um, I don't know, I was probably still a bit of it, you know, where people meet up around toilets. In my, you know, in, the, in my 20s and 30s, possibly 40s, Used to be a lot more outdoor activity, you know, where people would meet. Waves was always a home-based group to say, I opened up the home. We didn't advertise addresses or anything in the media. So if somebody actually wanted to come along to a group meeting, they had to then get our details and we had to get their details for security. Uh, when we uh, entered into senior at school, we were given a lot more respect. Uh, by the teachers and by the other students. And I guess high, in high school, as you grow older, you climb up the social hierarchy so that it's more difficult for people to pick on you, or at least there are less people who are prepared to do that. Um, and that was probably one of the, uh, the good things about uh, growing up in high school. But the other thing was uh, we were given access to an old unused study, which, uh, which was ostensibly meant for uh, Year 12s who wanted to study, but no one really used it. Uh, except us, and it was good for us because we were able to go there and uh, just be ourselves and just muck around and have fun. And uh, we didn't make much of a mess or anything like that, so the teachers kind of looked the other way. And uh, what started happening from uh, year 11 onwards was uh, there was three, three of us initially and four, then four became five, and five became six. And, uh, and eventually students started coming from other years um, some as young as 12 and 13, uh, into our study, and it became obvious that they were coming for the same reason. Uh, they just didn't fit in to the social groups uh, outside of the um, study, and they came to our study in order to be um, among friends, or at least uh, in order not to be bullied and uh, teased by the, the students that, that were around them. Um, the Technically, they weren't allowed in there because uh, it was a senior study for senior school, but um, the principal and some senior teachers 
uh, didn't see a problem given that no one was using the study anyway, so they allowed them to stay. And that study became, for the entire duration of my time at, at uh, school, um, a haven for young people, many of whom turned out to be uh, gay. Um, and it was quite accidental, and no one really intended that that would be the case. But because uh, we found a place where we could be ourselves, um, we were attracted to that, that uh, place, and it uh, worked out very well for a lot of the students there. Um, because um, we didn't have nearly as much bullying as a lot of kids experienced growing up in similar sorts of schools to the one that I went to. I like being gay because it's all I've known. I can't say I don't like it, I can't say I wish I was something else because I don't know what it's like. I know it would be a lot easier to be something else, but you know, even then I'd probably find a problem with something else. Um, I think there was one support group coming up, this group, this organisation, um, but it didn't go because I think from memory at the time it was an older crowd. I didn't feel like I had anything um, in common with like the older men that came to the group. Um, I don't think there was anything besides that. There was in the city Akon groups for young people. But in terms of support, I kind of supported myself. I've been a member of the uh, Canterbury Bowling Club um, for some time um, and have worked right through nearly all the venues. Canterbury Hotel, um, I've done gigs there, I've done gigs at Hilston Park RSL. Talking about um, uh, bars and stuff, way back there was a bar in um, Earlwood itself in an arcade there called White something. Charlie's Charlie Place. Charlie, oh yeah, that's it. Charlie's Place. Lovely place it was too. Just a little bar, wine bar. Fantastic. <laughs> that was a fabulous place. I remember it well. Um, yeah, I went there with a friend of mine. His name was Gordon. Um, yeah, I don't know where he is now. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah. Um, is it a dying community? Absolutely not. It's a community that's involving that needs um, a youth aspect. It needs the ability to drive the community away from hotels and clubs. It needs the ability to find space within its own areas. Um, and I think the Come Out has a very, very strong influence in our community. And as you know, I'm part of the Come Out group and support it 100% and donate as much time as I can. Um, but I think what it really does need to focus on is how to get that word out, how to get it out through the local publications, how to make itself proud um, that it could start its own come out group within itself. And um, I did this film that in 2009 and I loved the experience very much, uh, particularly the after events. I enjoyed um, watching myself in the movie. Um, which was called Backyards, and I recommend you watch it. Um, it's, honest to God, I've never done anything like that before. I, it was kind of, it was fun filming it, like it really was. It was, a, you know, a lot of cool people there, and it was very laid back, and it was something different. It wasn't clubbing. Um, and I'm actually glad that I did it. Um, I met a really nice person through that. I met a lot of nice people, and yeah. So, like for that reason, I think you know what. Sometimes you, it was very. I was very nervous when it was finished, and I found out that it was going to be the show in new places. But um, I think I just got a bit uptight about it. Um, there was nothing negative about the experience, really. Um, the fact that we got to do that and it got to be shown to other people only meant that this kind of group is getting promoted somehow, in some way, and there'll, there'll be people out there who watch it and think they, they look like they had a lot of fun doing it, you know, and it didn't look like you needed to be an expert actor, uh, if you've watched the film, you'll know what I mean, um, and that it was something to do for fun, and it wasn't just, you know, with no goal or anything, there was a purpose to it, you know, and I think it provides us with something different to do, to focus on, to commit to. People run department stores who are 
homosexual. And our secretaries are big companies and stuff. And you know, I'm surprised these days in the business pages you read about some Mr. Mr. So and So and his partner. I haven't heard it about women, but I'm sure you know that that'll happen too. So I think so, things have developed in that in that sphere very, very much. It then started growing, and so holding something in a person's home when you're getting a hundred people turning up to a social night, it became more practical to hold it. Reesby Workers Club at the time, but its peak, I think, memory serves, it had just under 800 members. I really like to just see really big events, and I'm going to lobby council for money so we can run a big community queer events. Queer events. I mean, like, queer, alternative, gay, lesbian, transgender, intersex, all those type of things. Would I like to see Mardi Gras and the main street of Canterbury? It's never going to happen. But, thus in saying that, the council can, if it wants to be completely a diverse council, and it wants to be a cross-section um, across the board, it needs to represent itself that it opens its doors to everyone. And fortunately, it's probably the one of council in Sydney, well, what I class as a Sydney council still, um, it's only, you know, kilometres away from the city, and I don't find it actually offers itself anything to the gay and lesbian community. It, it barely has any outreach program. It doesn't have a ACON. It really only has a sexual health clinic at Canterbury Hospital, which is not focused on gay and lesbian. Um, it is completely focused on heterosexual relationships, but is opening in its doors to anyone. A lot of the youth that do have sexual health issues um, really don't go to Canterbury Sexual Health Clinic. They will prefer to go to the city. And is it the fact that they don't want to travel? No, it's the fact that they don't feel welcome. Um, it takes very, very little and very, very little funding to open the doors to this community. So, um, even though the community in Punchbowl aren't as accepting, um, I think I think it's a it's a work in progress. Here at um, Belmore, lovely uh, community centre. I go to other community centres where we play cards, quite different to this, and um, I think this is excellent because it's got so much facilities. It's got the outdoors where you can have a barbecue, which we had tonight. That's no, an, an excellent facility. This. It was, I, re I thought at least at the time that it was going to be something that was more similar, more close to what I could relate to, if that makes sense. And it did turn out to be that. Um, I mean, of course, it's not exactly what um, I'm looking for, but I've accepted the fact that I probably won't find what I'm looking for. Um, but if I find stuff that's close enough, then I'm content with that. And that's how I feel about coming out. It's close enough <laughs> to what I'm looking for. And um, I see a lot of potential in it. And I think having it be so laid back and sort of focusing on, on the West, Western suburbs, particularly my home area, Canterbury, um, I think is a good thing for the gay community because like people like me um, who don't have an interest in partying and, and dancing and clubbing and, and stuff, it's a good way out, it's a good release. I'm happy with that. I have my, you know, my friends. When you get to my age, people don't give a F, you know, about sexuality. I think people do when they're younger. It's kind of important, I guess, but when you're older, Mind you, I don't know, maybe if you're 20 these days, you know, it doesn't matter at all. Um, look, um, I think that there is a long progress to go. I think that the council do not do anything that's supportive of its gay and lesbian community. So I think what it needs to do is also focus ways of challenging those religious beliefs and allowing gay and lesbian people to become part of the culture of Canterbury as well. To say that it is accepting 
um, to allow us to um, provide uh, gala events um, for local businesses that are, that are um, gay driven um, and it's not so much for my generation it's really for the younger generation because there is a lot of people in our community around the Canterbury Bankston area that are not out uh, that can't be out um, and um, in which they can't come out to their parents due to um, their beliefs and um, and I find that that a huge challenge for them. Like, and that's okay. You go to this, if you live in this area, it's close enough to be, it's close enough to go to nightclubs in the city, if you incline that way. But what I'm noticing now is that there's a change in the area, whereas it's becoming a lot more bohemian. Like a lot of bohemian people are starting to move around here, so a lot of people that can't afford to live in Marrickville or Newtown. And you're getting a lot of artistic, uh, creative, creative types living around here now. And I've seen that change. And that's kind of, like in Irwood especially, so that's kind of changing the fabric of the community. It's not the people that want to go into those mainstream places anymore into the city. I think people are more interested in the local and the specific. What about Canterbury do I love the most? Uh, the Cooks River, I think, is the highlight of my... Uh, area. Now, you, I know you're laughing when you say Canterbury, Cooks River, because um, it, it, it was a soup, a bowl once, but uh, over the years it's developed and it has spent a lot of money on it. Effectively, where we are on Canterbury Road area of Cooks River, it's not very attractive um, and really needs a lot of help and love. But further down, just a minute's walk down the river, it's, it's an absolute beautiful spot. Uh, with places that you can picnic, have barbecues, um, and lovely sports grounds as well, um, which is a, a big inspiration when I need time out, so that's what I love about it so much. Most people would have uh, referred to that study as the place where all the gay kids go. Um, I was still elected school captain of Canterbury Boys High School, which shows an, an enormous maturity and uh, um, of the students. Um, and the fact that when uh, senior members of school administrations um, do not tolerate homophobia, schools become much more tolerant places. I now live in Glebe, um, and, and I, I like the lifestyle there. Um, however, it's, um, it's, um, it's, it's, I, don't, I, I think it's, a, it's important for kids these days to be able to feel comfortable in their own hometowns, whether it be, you know, the city or, or out in the west, you know, and it, I think the more we can educate the community a, about, you know, gay issues and, and remind them that we are just um, people like anyone else, I think there's a lot more understanding and a lot more, just um, a lot more common, you know, just common understanding, I guess. So, there we go. Being in a Lebanese family, as bad as it is, it, it, it is to say, don't come out unless you've got somewhere you can go, a bit of money, um, and someone that you know has your back. I think that coming out, especially with Lebos, is very, very hard. Um, but don't ever fall into the trap of trying to please your family. You know, if you're a gay guy, don't get married. Um, in the long run, it may seem like a way out at the beginning, but it's a slow black hole that you eventually creep into and you're dragging someone else with you. Like I keep going back to the whole Lebanese thing, I think you just need to be strong. You need to stand your ground. It's not easy. I don't think any culture is easy really. I think that we've, we've all got it quite, quite hard. I think religion has to blame for a lot of it. Whether you're, you know, you're Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, whatever it is. Just um, make sure you, you find out who you are first. Be in touch with yourself and then Basically for everybody, just believe in yourself and if someone or some organisation or anything that may come across your path that you may not feel comfortable with, it is okay to go, okay, no, I don't have to agree with you, I acknowledge you, I accept what you're saying, but that's your story, that's your life, this is my life. My advice to people coming out would be to, it depends on which kind of person was asking it. If it was uh, a young person, I'd say, um, I 
that's a, it depends on the kind of, like if it was a young person, I go, do you actually need to come out? Maybe it's better if you just leave home and, because I know that for some people that come from Muslim backgrounds, the best things they can do is not come out and actually just leave home. Uh, but if it's someone whose family will accept it, then I would say, please do come out and uh, coming out isn't a one step, coming out is a process. And sometimes you come out and sometimes you don't come out. Sometimes in workplaces you come out, sometimes in workplaces you don't come out. Um, so there's no one blanket rule for everyone. And uh, maybe coming out isn't right for you, but maybe it's the best thing for you. You're different people in different areas, hmm. and that's the nature of being someone queer in a homophobic society. There's a very high rate share of suicide in our community, and that, a lot of that is sexuality choice. Not necessarily because they're gay, but the realisation that is it acceptable to be heterosexual is it acceptable to be gay, or where do I stand at this time of my life? The council, it's not the council's job in solely, or the Department of Health's job, it's about everyone's job, to come together, look at our issues. You know, we have, uh, we have associations that are d divided to uh, make us aware about cancer, especially breast cancer in Canterbury. We have the, uh, the van that turns up and does breast screening then why is it such an issue that we can't have something in our community that um, brings awareness that it's okay to be gay, it's okay to be heterosexual, it's okay to be bisexual, but if you want to talk it out, that we can supply a community service, a counselling service, um, or a safe place to be. You know, why is it such that I can only walk into uh, the, a main place in, in Camp C um, as a boy, where effectively I could walk in as a woman. And would that be an issue? It shouldn't be an issue. We're a diverse community, a diverse council. And that's something that we need to address. That why aren't our venues safe places to be for everyone? Why don't they have a pink triangle? So kids can see that at the front door and go, I think my mates are going to bash me because they found out that I might have had something I might have been experimenting or something similar to that, um, and they found out, I think I'm going to get bashed. Who can I run into a hotel or run into a shop and say to them, I feel unsafe, can you please call a counsellor or call a, a safety group, a police liaison officer, just so I can try and sort this out. I don't think council, the, council, the uh, police station at Canterbury has a liaison, gay and lesbian liaison, and if they have, it's definitely not promoted. These are the things that make a lot of difference. It's our youth that we have to worry about, not our old ones. Uh, uh, for those who, who are coming out, like I'm not, I'm not an expert. I'm not, you know, the best person to get advice of because I, I messed up a lot. But. Um, the best thing I can say is to just stay true to yourself all the time and be real. Don't conform to what you know the general community is like. Be yourself all the time and if you feel that you don't quite fit in, then embrace that and look for people who don't fit in as well because you'll get along with them probably. Um, there's always stuff that you can do. There's always something that you can you know commit yourself to to make you feel a bit worthy if you don't feel worthy. Um, you know, like for me, I've never told my parents, but I'm happy. People that are young coming out, I don't know, you know, I, I suppose when you're young, you've got a lot more kind of sexual urges. And um, maybe it's good to go to a club, meet people there. But maybe before you just want to meet people and talk and things, because you can't talk in clubs. Much too much music, really. Um, it's good to come to these kind of groups. Um, and a group like this is very close to Belmore Station um, and very easy parking if you're coming by car. And of course, an awful lot of people do have cars, etc. So um, I, I think they're very good things. And I think it's awfully important. Uh, just for some people, I think it's very important. 
And for a lot of other people, it's good.